Good evening. The future of the West Coast Rail franchise has been thrown into crisis because of a series of embarrassing mistakes by the Department for Transport. The decision to take the franchise away from Virgin Trains and award it to First Group has now been cancelled. Ministers say the bids were handled incorrectly. Three civil servants have been suspended today, as our transport correspondent Richard Westcott reports. At stake, a £5 billion contract to run one of Britain's busiest and most lucrative rail lines, the West Coast. Virgin have run the service for 15 years, but two months ago they were told rivals' first group would be taking over. Virgin cried foul. The brand new transport secretary stuck by the decision. I am satisfied that due diligence was done by the department uh, and um, therefore the intention is to go ahead. It was about to go to court, then a remarkable confession. The government had got its sums wrong. What has happened is unacceptable, it's deeply regrettable and of course I apologise. We have made a big mistake as far as the department is concerned. So what exactly went wrong? It seems incredible but government experts made basic mistakes in their calculations. They forgot to include inflation and failed to count passenger numbers properly. Errors that will cost the taxpayer £40 million to put right. For the Virgin boss, Sir Richard Branson, it means the chance to bid again. Obviously, everybody at Virgin Trains are absolutely delighted. I think the passengers are delighted as well. Um, we certainly didn't want to have to go to court. But his counterpart at First Group saw 19% knocked off his share price today. We were gutted. I mean, bitterly disappointed in the news because our team had worked so hard over so many months and put together a great bid. So who's to blame? The government's keen to point the finger at civil servants. Three have been suspended, but questions will now be asked of the last transport secretary, Justine Greening, who spent weeks insisting all was well. Today, Labour went on the attack. It's a huge shambles pouring £40 million of public money down the drain, and until very recently, both old and new transport ministers were assuring the public and assuring us in Parliament that this was a robust and proper process. It all puts intense pressure on the system used for picking rail contracts. The politicians are deciding to do something which is basically impossible. Uh, they're trying to let a 15-year franchise on a fixed price, revenue risk basis, and it can't be done. There is absolutely no chance that this mess is going to be cleaned up by the time Virgin's contract runs out in December. So the big question for customers then, who is going to keep these trains running over the busy Christmas period and beyond until they sort this whole thing out? Ministers promise that services won't suffer, but they're left with a hard choice. Take the line back into public hands or make the embarrassing phone call to Sir Richard Branson asking for help. Richard Westcott, BBC News. Well, let's pick up and talk to our deputy political editor, James Landale, who's in Manchester at the Labour Party conference. James, what are your thoughts on the potential impact of, of this mess on, on the government's own reputation? Well, Hugh, it's clearly awful timing for the government. If you remember, uh, earlier this year, the government got into trouble at the budget, uh, confusion over tax changes, the so-called omni-shambles that prompted accusations of incompetence. Well. Along comes this, uh, this error, this mistake, and it allows Labour here in Manchester to reopen that whole question of the government's competence when the government spent so much time trying to move on from that and focus on the economy. So this is the last thing that David Cameron wanted. He asked for this franchise to be handled properly, we're told, but it was not done so. But there's also, I think, a wider question here. Is this just a case of a few civil servants getting their sums wrong? But there's also the wider question of, is this another illustration of Whitehall getting into difficulties whenever it tries to spend large amounts of taxpayers' money on big private sector projects, whether it is tram transport infrastructure or NHS hospitals and computer systems or defence procurement? We don't know the answer to that question. We won't until we get these inquiries reporting. But any, either way, the events of today damage business confidence and particularly confidence in the way they deal with government and that can only damage the economy. James, thanks very much. James Landell, therefore, is in Manchester. Police in Mid Wales.